Well, good afternoon to all of you. I am Senator Dorgan. I'm joined by my colleague, Senator Enzi, today. We have introduced uh, a simple two-page bill that would end all of the current restrictions on travel to Cuba by American citizens. The bill simply says that the President may not regulate or prohibit travel to or from Cuba by U.S. citizens or legal residents or any of the financial transactions ordinarily incident to such travel. The only exceptions are in time of war between the United States and Cuba or imminent danger to the public health or the physical safety of U.S. travelers. I'm very pleased to work with Senator Enzi. We've been working on this for many, many years together. Uh, this legislation has 20 co-sponsors as we introduce it today. We are joined by Senator Luger, who's the ranking member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Senator Dodd, the chairman of the Banking Committee, and the chairman of the Subcommittee on the Western Hemisphere Affairs. Uh, there are many other co-sponsors. And we are joined today by representatives of a number of non-government organizations who support lifting the travel ban. They include Bob Stallman, who you'll hear from, president of the American Farm Bureau Federation, Myron Brilliant, a senior vice president of international affairs at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, and Jose Miguel Vivanco, executive director of the American Division of the Human Rights Watch. And uh, Thomas uh, uh, Bilbo is also in the audience. He's the executive director of the Cuba Study Group, a group of Cuban-American businesses and community leaders who have long worked for a free and democratic Cuba. He's in the audience. Uh, would you identify yourself? Uh, he's not in the audience. He's out by the door. Well, at, at any rate, uh, we appreciate very much your being here. Let me just say quickly that uh, all of us believe very strongly that the people of Cuba ought to be free. We hope for greater human rights in Cuba. We have uh, no uh, interest in the Castro government except to find a way to replace it uh, at some point in the future so that the Cuban people have the freedoms that uh, they deserve. Uh, however, this issue today with respect to the travel restrictions is a failed policy that has failed for 50 years, and it's long past the time to change the policy. I want to show you how absurd the policy has become. Punishing the American people in our effort to somehow deal a blow to the Castro government has not made any sense at all. This woman is Joan Sloat, a senior Olympian, a bicycle rider, who joined a bicycle group from Canada to take a bicycle trip in Cuba. For that, she was tracked down by the United States government and levied a fine in fact, they even threatened to attach her Social Security payments for taking a bicycle trip with some Canadian friends in the country of Cuba. This next photograph is of Joan Scott. Joan Scott is a, an American citizen. I've met both of these women, by the way. She went to Havana, Cuba to pass out free Bibles. Let me say that again. An American citizen who went to Havana, Cuba to pass out free Bibles. For that, her government tracked her down and threatened a very, very large fine because both of these women violated the Trading with the Enemies Act as it's defined under current law. And finally, let me just show you the photograph of a man named Carlos Lazo. He went to Iraq to fight for our country. He was a distinguished soldier who earned uh, a bronze star uh, for valor. And he came back from the Iraq war, and his son, who was living in Cuba, was very ill. And our government told him he, could, he was not able to go visit his sick son. I mean, that is what this has come to. It's why it is long past the time for us to change these restrictions. We ought not punish the American people. We ought to have uh, the freedom to travel in Cuba, uh, and that's what the Freedom to Travel Act provides. One final point. Uh, I was involved with Senator Enzi and others that opened just a crack some many years ago the opportunity to sell agricultural products and medicine into Cuba. We've sold over $2 billion of agricultural commodities into the Cuban marketplace. 
It is required to be paid for with cash. We began that commerce because I thought it was immoral to have an embargo and restriction against the selling of food in those circumstances. That was one small step forward. We believe the next step, however, is to eliminate these travel restrictions. And we believe very strongly with 20 co-sponsors in the United States Senate that in this session of the Congress, finally, at last, at long, long last, this policy that's been in place for nearly 50 years and has not worked will finally be removed uh, through this legislation. Senator Enzi. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to work with Senator Dorgan on this issue. And yes, we've been working on it for years. I, I joined him when I got here, and that was 12 years ago. Uh, it's been an interesting process. The reason that I was involved in it originally was because a, a man named Manuel Lopez had been born in Cuba and now lives in Jackson, Wyoming. And he was taking advantage of the law we used to have where you could visit your relatives once a year. And he visited his mom and dad in Cuba. He got on a plane and came back, and on the way back, his dad died. We kept him from going to the funeral for his dad so that he had that year before he could go back. Now both of his parents have passed away. He has kids. He would like to show his kids where he grew up. He can't go there because he doesn't have any living relatives. That's not to mention the other people that would like to travel to Cuba who could have an influence on the people in Cuba, who could make a difference for democracy. We've had exchange groups that used to get to go to Cuba, but don't get to go to Cuba anymore. Every time that we have brought up one of these bills, there's a downside to it. The downside to it is that Castro has always done something that really violated human rights and raised the ire of the American people who said, how can you possibly eliminate any of the restrictions on Cuba? Well, that's exactly why they do those things. They don't want us to reduce any of those restrictions. They don't want the interoperation, the intercommunication with American citizens. They don't want that. It would make a difference. Now, we've been doing this for 50 years. 50 years we've been saying you can't go there. Now, my dad always said, if you keep on doing what you've been doing, you're going to wind up with what you got. So every once in a while, try something just a little different. And that's what we're doing with this bill. We're trying something just a little different. And I think it will make a huge impact. It will change Cuba. And it will change other of our policies. Thank you. Senator Enzi, thank you very much. Bob Stallman, President of the American Farm Bureau. Thank you, Senator Dorgan. And it's a great pleasure for me to join Senators Dorgan and Enzi in this support of S-428. American Farm Bureau Federation has long been in support of opening up trade and travel with Cuba. This bill is an important next step. It will allow for unrestricted travel to Cuba. That's important to us because it allows agricultural sales and the interchange of people that needs to occur for that to happen uh, to, be, to be allowed. And we believe that this bill would boost travel and tourism and once again uh, open up markets, greater markets for our agricultural products. We've worked long and hard to try to trade with Cuba. Senator Dorgan mentioned the fact that we do have the ability under fairly severe commercial restrictions to trade agricultural goods with Cuba. Long term, we need to do more to open up the channels of trade like we do for every other country uh, in the world. It's an important market for soybeans, dairy, wheat, rice, and poultry. Even with the restrictions that have been in place, we have exported roughly $400 million a year on average uh, to Cuba once we were allowed to open up that trade again. We anticipate that market could grow to one billion or more given the fact that Cuba has to access food for its people from far distant shores where they could access it from the U.S. just frankly 90 miles uh, across the channel. So we're looking forward to working with Senators Dorgan and Enzi and, and others who want to pass this legislation. We have been doing the same thing for roughly 50 years, and we have shown through our interactions with other countries, through exchanges of goods and people, that that does more to affect political change than we've been able to accomplish for the 50 years worth of embargo with Cuba. So we look forward to uh, working to pass this bill. Thank you very much, Mr. Stallman. Myron Brilliant is the Senior Vice President of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Mr. Brilliant. 
Well, let me uh, begin by thanking uh, Senator Dorgan and Senator Enzi, I think uh, not only for your leadership, but also for the important piece of legislation you're introducing here today. Uh, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce has long been an opponent of unilateral economic sanctions, and we believe that the senators are taking the right step. I also want to acknowledge the House counterparts to this legislation, De La Hunt and Flake, for their leadership as well, and Senator Luger and Senator Dodd and others who are supporting the two senators here. Uh, we have been a long-standing opponent of the embargo with Cuba. Uh, we, we see the end of the travel ban as an important first step, but ultimately what we want to see is also an end of the trade embargo. Uh, the previous speaker mentioned the benefits uh, for American agriculture. There are also obviously American businesses and American workers who would benefit from a relationship, an economic relationship with Cuba. I should also mention uh, that the International Trade Commission did a study which demonstrated that we lose about $1.2 billion annually exporters lose in sales. That's real money and that's real jobs uh, that we're losing. But more importantly, uh, there is a regional context to this. It would elevate our relationships uh, in Latin America. It would also change the perceptions of foreign policy around the world. At a time of political transition in our country, we need the leadership that is demonstrated by these two centers. The U.S. Chamber believes this is the right goal, this is the right first step to lifting, ultimately, the trade embargo with Cuba. We stand in support of you. We will be there when you need us, and you can continue to count on the U.S. Chamber of Commerce to oppose unilateral economic sanctions. They do not work. This has been a failed policy in Cuba for 47 years. We can't allow it to go on further. Thank you. Mr. Brilliant, thank you very much. And finally, Jose Miguel Vivanco, who is the Executive Director of the America's Division Human Rights Watch. Mr. Vivanco. Thank you very much. Senator Dorgan, Senator Enzi, thank you uh, for your invitation uh, to speak today on the Freedom to Travel to Cuba Act. Human Rights Watch has been monitoring human rights conditions in Cuba for nearly two decades. Over that time, Cuba has consistently stood out as the one country in the Western Hemisphere that represses nearly all forms of political dissent. The Cuban government continues to enforce political conformity using criminal prosecutions with no due process, long and short-term short detentions, mob harassment, surveillance, and even travel restrictions. The dismal state of uh, human rights in Cuba has not improved since the handover of power from Fidel to Raul Castro. Yet, for as long as Cuba's repressive machinery has denied its people their most basic rights, the US policy toward Cuba has neither weakened the Cuban government nor improved the situation of human rights in the country. On the contrary, it has helped consolidate the Castro regime's hold on power by providing the government with an excuse for its problem and uh, a justification for its abuses. The policies of, of all or nothing approach aim of overthrowing the Cuban government limits the ability of the US chart a, a middle ground in bringing about change in Cuba. The decades old restrictions <coughs> on travel to Cuba by Americans and Cuban Americans typify the ineffectiveness and the cruelty of this policy. A report by Human Rights Watch documented the terrible human cost of these restrictions and found that they violated international human rights standards. It also demonstrated that these restrictions, like the US policy in general, have done nothing to bring change to Cuba. Human Rights Watch is very encouraged by the introduction of the Freedom to Travel to Cuba Act, which marks a welcome break from this all or nothing approach. We strongly advise the Congress to support it, and we urge the US government to use this bill's introduction to begin a broader re-evaluation and reform of its policies toward Cuba. This act might, must be the first among several steps to replace the United States failed unilateral policy with a more targeted multilateral approach. 
leaders in the Congress should use this bill as the impetus for forging a new strategy with partners in Europe and Latin America. Only by working with our allies will we have the political power and the moral authority to bring change to Cuba. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, we have just been joined by our colleague, Senator Dodd. Uh, Senator Dodd, would you wish to comment? Oh, quick. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, first of all, let me um, let me commend Senator Dorgan and Senator Enzi and Senator Luger and others who are here uh, for their efforts in this regard. It's 20 years ago this year that the Cold War ended, uh, November of uh, of uh, 1989, uh, and we've come a long way in 20 years. And I think the best antidote to totalitarianism uh, is uh, is the American citizen traveling, the ability to actually communicate with other people. Nothing does more, in my view, and historically been proven the case, to ameliorate the kind of situation we see in Cuba today than the average citizen going out and connecting, communicating with people in countries where totalitarianism exists. Our goal is obviously to bring change to Cuba, democratic change to Cuba. I happen to believe that for 40 years this policy has done just the opposite. I think it's perpetuated a situation. And today, Cuban Americans and others uh, would like the opportunity to get to that country, to see relatives, to see friends, to begin to open up that process. Now, this is long overdue. We went through eight years of shutting down a relationship that did not produce the results that many hoped it would. It's time for change, time to do something different, time to try a new approach. There's an opportunity, I think, emerging because of changes that are occurring on the island of Cuba. And I think we ought to take advantage of those changes, trying to open up that process further. And nothing would do more to that in, uh, in my view, than dealing with the travel restriction. This ought to be an issue that people can come together on. If you're truly interested in creating change, if you truly want to see a more dramatic and more immediate change in Cuba, then I think the quickest way we can achieve that result is by supporting this proposal. So I thank my, my colleagues uh, on a bipartisan basis uh, that are urging this kind of, uh, of a move. And we would hope the Obama administration would support it as well. I think we're on the brink of real opportunity here. This move, I think, can help us achieve that. Let us take a couple of questions, if we might. And then, but let me, let me make one final point, if I might, as well. We are part of a process here in which our country has defined in two decades something called constructive engagement in dealing with communist countries. We say with China, we say with Vietnam and others, Constructive engagement through trade and travel is the right way and the best way to move those countries towards greater human rights. That is significantly a part of what we suggest with respect to Cuba. This is about change and the road to freedom for the Cuban people. And we believe very strongly that the constructive engagement with other countries, allowing the American people to travel and engage in trade and travel, and the opposite approach with respect to Cuba has been counterproductive in trying to move the Cuban government towards greater human rights and trying to give the Cuban people the freedom they deserve. Senator, has, has the Obama administration given you any signals of